How confident are you in assessing patients with dizziness? Dizziness is a common presentation. This week, I've seen at least three patients who presented with dizziness. Hi, my name is Dr. Owen. Today, we're going to talk about dizziness. The purpose of this video is purely educational and it is not intended for medical advice. It is important that you have a systematic approach when you assess the patient who presents with dizziness. There are many underlying causes to dizziness, which is why it's so important to approach the assessment in a systematic way so that you don't miss any underlying cause. When you see a patient who presents with dizziness, it can be helpful if you can clarify what exactly do they mean by dizziness. Dizziness is a term that people use to mean different things. So it could be the patient is experiencing lightheadedness, it could be that the patient is experiencing vertigo. They feel that the room is spinning around or they are spinning around. It could mean that they are feeling unsteady on the feet or it could be something very vague that they can't really describe. So if you can clarify with the patient what do they mean by dizziness, it can give you a better idea about what exactly they are experiencing. However, Sometimes it can be difficult for the patient to verbalize what do they mean by dizziness. And if that's the case, then other questions that might be helpful is to ask the patient whether this dizziness is constant, is it there all the time, or is a dizziness something that's intermittent? Does it come and go, and how long does it last when it's there? Moreover, it's important to know whether this dizziness is triggered by something. Is it triggered when you stand up? You're feeling lightheaded when you're standing up or when you're turning your head around or there could be no triggers to it. It could be that this happened without any pattern. Commonly, patients may present with associated symptoms to the dizziness. Gathering such information might help you to diagnose the underlying cause of the dizziness. Associated symptoms could include headache, nausea or vomiting, palpitations, chest pain, unilateral weakness or ear aches. As you can observe, these symptoms could be related to different systems, which is why it's important to have a systematic approach. When I assess a patient with dizziness, I think about three systems in my mind. The first system is the autological system. The second system is a cardiovascular system. And the third system is a neurological system. Common otological causes of dizziness include Meniere's disease, bending paroxysmal positional vertigo, also known as BPPV, or labyrinthitis. Cardiovascular causes of dizziness include postural hypotension, cerebrovascular disease such as stroke or TIA, cardiac arrhythmia, aortic stenosis, and subclavian steel syndrome. Neurological causes of dizziness include epilepsy, multiple sclerosis, brain tumors, normal pressure hydrocephalus, and peripheral neuropathy. It's vital to ask the patient whether they've also sustained a head injury because this could also cause dizziness. This is not an exhaustive list of causes of dizziness. Dizziness could be caused by many other reasons such as hypoglycemia, anemia, or generalized anxiety. As a doctor, it's important to keep an open mind. When you're taking a history from the patient who presents with dizziness, let the patient tell you their story. Also, could you tell me when it all started? So ask the patient when it's all started from the beginning, the first episode, take you back to this episode. And this will help you to pick up on cues that the patient may reveal when they're telling their story. Once the patient has told their story, then you can ask specific questions to narrow down your diagnosis. As you can imagine, dizziness can be a very debilitating problem for patients. So this could have impact to their life, to their work. So it's important to elicit the social aspect of the history, to elicit whether this is causing any interference with their life, because this is something that you'd like to address in the second part of the consultation. With social aspects, it's important to ask the patient in a sensitive way 
whether they drink alcohol or any use of recreational drugs because dizziness could be a manifestation of alcohol intoxication or a result of using recreational drugs. Once you have taken a thorough history from the patient, the next step is to proceed by examination. You might want to examine the otological system, the cardiovascular system, and the neurology system. If you're suspecting BPPV, then you may want to proceed with doing a dix hall pike examination. It's important that you warn the patient about the examination and to check whether the patient have any neck problems such as arthritis of the neck because this could cause problem when you do the examination. When you perform the dix hall pike examination, the patient might feel dizzy when they turn their head on one side. You might also observe nystagmus. You might want to have a look in the patient's ears using your otoscope. When it comes to cardiovascular examination, you might want to check the blood pressure sitting and standing. This would give you an idea whether there's any signs of postural hypertension. It might be worth palpating the pulse of the patient and check how strong it is, whether it is regular or irregular. You might want to have a listen to the heart to check whether you can hear any murmur. Sometimes you can find that there is a systolic murmur. Picking up such cues might help you to diagnose the underlying cause of dizziness. For example, if the patient has aortic stenosis, this could cause dizziness. The next examination you might consider is to check the cranial nerves, to check the visual system of the patient. The assessment of sensation and gait will help you to build a picture about what's causing the dizziness. You might also want to assess the cerebellar system, in which case you check the coordination of the patient. If there is some problems with the coordination, then this points you towards a central cause of dizziness. It can be difficult to distinguish between a central cause of vertigo from an acute peripheral vestibulopathy. A screening tool you could use is the HINT exam. If you'd like to watch a demonstration of a HINTS exam, check the video in the link below. Having taken a thorough history and performed focus examination, the next step is to consider investigations that might help you. By this time, you may have a good idea as to what is the underlying cause of the dizziness. You request the investigation to confirm your diagnosis or to rule out your differential diagnosis. Investigations include blood tests, full blood count, UNEs, blood glucose. You might want to do an ECG or even refer the patient to secondary care for further investigations. Management of dizziness depends on the underlying cause. If you have diagnosed a patient of BPPV, the management would be to perform an EPLE maneuver. Be mindful that this procedure may take 15 to 20 minutes. If you're seeing the patient, you might want to bring the patient back for a consultation on how this procedure done. Brenda Ruff exercise is another option to manage BPPV. If you have diagnosed a patient of postural hypertension, think of their medication. Could one of the medications be the reason why they're experiencing postural hypertension? It is vital that you have a thorough discussion with your patient and explain the patient the problem and the underlying cause. This will help the patient understand the reason why they're experiencing the dizziness and what can be done about it. Let's recap what we've talked today. Dizziness is a common presentation. It's vital to consider various systems that could point to the underlying diagnosis. Otological causes, cardiovascular causes, and neurological causes. As you will gather, there are other causes that we have not mentioned today, but it's important that you approach the dizzy patient in a systematic way so that you don't miss out any important possible diagnosis. I hope you find this video useful. I'll see you in the next video. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.